we are. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. Uh, welcome everyone in this sanctuary and those who are on Zoom service also and those who will join us later through a recording. Here at Wesley, we forced a sanctuary culture by creating a safe environment where all feel welcome, loved, accepted, valued, and affirmed for who they are through intentional practices such as empathy, compassion, generosity, hospitality, and uh, if you are on Zoom connection, uh, please register your attendance by recording your name and the names of those participating worship with you in a chat addressed to the meeting host today, who is uh, Becky Copeland. And uh, brief announcements are back of your bulletin. And for the detail, uh, please check Wesley weekly email or news and announcements under the resource tab of the church website. What a joyous day. Uh, we have been waiting for and praying for this day for over 14 months. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks uh, to the Wesley leadership, uh, particularly the Reentry Task Force and worship team uh, for their hard work and dedication. And also thanks to all of you for your faithfulness and patience. Thank you. Uh, today is Trinity Sunday. May all of you experience the special blessings of God the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit through this service. I invite you now to please stand in body or spirit for the call to worship. Let us read responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of that name. The voice of God is powerful. In the temple of God, all say, Glory. May the Lord give strength to the people. You may be seated. Let us join hearts and voices into one as we pray together our common prayer. Everlasting God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Mother, Son, and Holy Spirit, and ever live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Grant that we may always hold firmly and joyfully to this faith, and living in praise of your divine majesty, may finally be one in you, who are three persons in one God, forever and ever. Amen. Recognizing that congregational singing is presently not advisable and recognizing the importance of hymnody in our worship, we invite you now to reflect on the text of the hymn, Holy, 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 as you listen to an instrumental interpretation.
get in prayer. Oh God, your love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us in Christ our Savior. We may live in you and you may live in us to the praise and the glory of the Holy Trinity, one God. Guide us to all truth by your Spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ revealed. Gracious God, you invite us as your people to gather the world's needs into our hearts and bring them before you. We pray for the world where your children fight and kill, die of hunger and COVID, oppress and exploit one another, bring your justice and peace to bear. Where your children suffer all kinds of discrimination, abuse and exclusion, bring healing and comfort to bear. Where your children lack vision and courage, unit with one another, the strength to serve you, bring your power and hope to bear. O oh God, in your mercy, fill us with courage, discernment, and compassion, that we may be your instruments of justice and peace in this world. God of life, you have created us in your image. Hear our prayers for healing and holiness on behalf of those for whom we intercede. Especially William, Daniel, Bill, Dorothy, Chloe, Paul, and those we pray in our hearts now. Pour out your spirit on them with strength and comfort. They may experience your loving presence and peace. Loving God, we thank you for your goodness revealed in all the blessings of life, especially for the covenant of marriage. Send your blessing upon Catherine and Patrick that they may grow in love together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows. O oh God, receive these prayers and reply with grace as we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Hebrew scripture reading this morning is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, 
I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips and live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to please stand in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading is from the gospel according to John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. I am reading this passage from the Inclusive Bible. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the dominion of God without being born from above. Nicodemus replied, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the dominion of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the human one. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up, that whoever believes in that one may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only child so that everyone who believes in that child may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the child into the world to condemn the world, but in order that through the child the world might be saved. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, today is Trinity Sunday, and I know that uh, my sermons are mostly doctrinal and too dry. And uh, I feel sorry uh, for those who need more pastoral and touching stories. But once a year, it is good for us to think hard about Trinity and what that means about God and us. Therefore, uh, even though today is the first Sunday we gather together in person to worship since March 2020, uh, I would like to share my reflections on the lectionary Trinity text. I, a missionary has devoted his whole life to evangelize one native tribe 
Uh, finally, the chief made up his mind to be baptized. The missionary told him, uh, I believe that you are ready, but there is only one obstacle. Uh, you have three wives, and it is against the holy teachings. Uh, you must let go of two wives by the Sunday morning before your baptism. Sunday morning, the chief said, I have prayed for and thought about what you have told me, but I cannot let go of my wives and children. Life out there in the wilderness is very dangerous and tough for women and children. Their lives will be miserable and they may die. So, you keep your three gods, I will keep my three wives. Is this good enough for Trinity Sunday sermon? Trinity is one of the most favorite research topics for Christian scholars. There are tens of thousands of books and articles on Trinity. While it has been crucially important to the doctrine of Christian faith, most Christians I know have no desire to wrestle with this topic when the world is already confusing enough. Here are a few example comments I have heard from lay people. The Trinity is too complicated and faith must be simple so that everybody should understand and believe. I am a lifelong Christian, and I think that I believe in the Trinity, but I do not have a clue about what it means. I come to the church to praise God and for assurance and comfort. I do not come to wrestle with doctrines. I understand what they say. We all believe in the Trinity. It is the foundation and safeguard of Christian faith. The doctrine of Trinity itself cannot be found explicitly in the Bible. Yet, it is fundamentally biblical to its essence. We confess the Apostles' Creed. It is the result of the Church's 300 years of reflecting on the Scripture and on its experience of God's self-revelation. And it has been about 700 years, the Church has set one Sunday aside for reflecting on the mystery of the Trinity. According to today's Hebrew text, Prophet Isaiah encounters God in the temple. He only catches a glimpse of the hem of God's robe, but even that is so much filled with God's holiness that Isaiah must turn away his eyes. He cries out. It is about God's holiness, God's completely Ordinance. God is so separate from everything else in existence that we have no reference for God. No analogy will do. Every metaphor for God finally breaks down. Totally other is God. Yet, as holy, as completely other as God is, not only heaven, but also the earth is filled with God's glory, filled with God's presence. Here is the divine contradiction, divine paradox. God, who is one, who is beyond everything, is also personal, fully present, and at work in this world. God is revealing God's self to the world. In other words, 
God, who is holy and completely other than us, is also for us and present to us. God is totally transcendental. But at the same time, God is fully immanent. God is one and indivisible in being. Yet, the Bible reveals this God comes to us in three distinct ways. God over us, God with us, and God in us. God the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The church has called each of these ways persons, not to differentiate them as individual gods, but to identify them as the three different ways God has revealed God's self to us, as well as the three different ways the three are related to one another within the unity of God's being. Father, Mother, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father, Mother is the Father, Mother, not because God is male or female. God is beyond all gender. Not because the first person of Godhead is like a father or a mother. We have to remember that nothing in the created order is suitable for defining God and capturing God's essence. As a metaphor, father and mother signifies source of life, living protector, attentive guide. These relations that our attributes are profoundly intimate. We call the second person of God that son because he comes from the father and mother, was sent by God as God's incarnation to reveal God to us, to be God with us, to live out his life with and for us as one of us. We know Jesus as son, not only because he was male and flesh, but as the Gospel of John confesses, because his life lived out in obedience to his father and mother. As Jesus prepares to return to his father and mother, he promised another advocate, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, whom we celebrated last Sunday. The Holy Spirit is the wind of God, Jesus speaks of in today's Gospel reading, who blows where it whose work is to give new birth from above, to transform, renew, sustain, to make us children of God. Through the Holy Spirit, the risen Christ is present to us in life. The Father and Mother is not the Son or a Spirit, but the Father and Mother, the Creator. The Son is neither the Father, Mother, nor the Spirit, but God in human flesh, sent as Savior to redeem the world through divine love. The Spirit is neither the Father, Mother, nor the Son, but God's being with us now. The means through whom you and I come to experience and know God and whom initiate within us the desire and ability to call out to God. Father, Mother, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three distinct means of God being over and above us, God being with and for us, God being in and among us. Three distinct relationships with one another who are nevertheless one in essence, will, purpose, and work. So simple and clear, isn't it? Preparing this sermon, 
I have kept asking to myself, what does the doctrine of Trinity mean to my congregation who rise each day to face the challenge of making a living, balancing their lives, and caring for home and family? Yet, I feel really sorry that I do not have a practical answer to this question. While I have no practical answer, I would like to share a little bit of my faith. As I have said a few times, to me, faith is the power that makes me to face the reality of life and the world without fear. No matter how ugly, tragic, difficult, or absurd the realities are. Because I know God created me out of love. Because I know Jesus the Christ incarnated lived, suffered, died, and rose for me. Because I know the Holy Spirit dwells in me, guides me, and prays for me, I can live every day of my life without fear. In other words, God the Trinity empowers me to embrace all the realities of life, including the suffering and death of the loved one, and eventually my own death someday. We all know that the two biggest events of our life are birth and death. Oftentimes, I am surprised by the fact that how many people do not want to think or talk about death even though it is a certain reality that everyone will encounter sooner or later. Why? Fear. People are afraid of death. This attitude is not just immature, but also unchristian. If we truly believe in God, the creator of the whole universe, source of our life, not just this life, but also beyond this life, if we truly believe in Jesus Christ, the Savior, who made us to live in communion with God, if we truly believe in the Holy Spirit, who renews, transforms, and sustains everything within creation, and remains present to us, there is nothing to fear or afraid of. Even death, although there is almost nothing present in death, because we know to whom we belong. One of the problems of our culture is that we have lost the power to face tragedy. A tragedy is an extremely sad event or situation. We all witnessed and experienced it through our life, and especially during this pandemic. Tragedy is sad, but not necessarily bad. It is a part of life. But most of us try to ignore or sugarcoat this reality of life. Most of Hollywood movies end with happy endings because people do not and cannot tolerate a tragedy. Some of us may argue, I made my will and funeral arrangement. Good. But well, they are mainly about finance and ceremony which are important, but not top priorities of life and death. 
How many of you were taught about the death by parents or mentors? Have you ever taught your children or grandchildren about how to embrace the tragic reality of life, including death? Like you, I value my moment of my life. No matter if it is joyous or sad, pleasant or distressful, not only because a life is blessing from God, but also because my days are limited. Today is 20,265th day of my life. Counting my days, I want and try to live fully each and every day. But as you know, my steps are always stumbling and I fall most of the time. My daily prayer is, gracious God, have mercy on me. Grant me little more faith. But even with staggering steps, I can regain my feet and take next step without fear, because I know that God created me. Jesus has died and rose for me. And the Holy Spirit guides me within me and prays for me. This is what I want to celebrate with you today. Even though we cannot understand the mystery of the Trinity of God. We can live in the embrace of the loving, triune God. This is good news. And thanks be to God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we hear a musical interpretation of him. I was there to hear your burning cry.
just want to remind you that uh, on your way out, uh, you may leave uh, your tithe and offerings uh, in the uh, offering plate uh, back of the sanctuary. And uh, you can also mail your offering uh, to the church or give online to the church website. Your friends, go out and entrust yourself to the winds of God's spirit. Put to death selfish desires and offer yourself for God's mission in the world. May God give strength to you. May Christ Jesus bless you with more faith each day. May the Holy Spirit within your hearts give you assurance that there is nothing to fear as God's children. The love of God, the grace of Christ, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.